Over the last two weeks, Anchor Make has gradually released information regarding their new product, the M5C, and this gradual release of information has sparked quite the discussion in the community, and in this video, I'm going to give you all of the juicy details that you want to know about this machine. I would venture to say that the M5C is not a downgrade, and in fact, it is an upgrade to the already incredible Anchor Make M5, and at the price of $399 US, this machine is specifically positioned as an entry-level high High speed printer which has a primary focus on ease of use and that is going to make this one of the most appealing options for beginners wanting to get into the 3d printing space now my two m5 printers have legitimately been the powerhouse of my 3d printing business and no i'm not getting paid to say that however i am legally obligated to let you know that anchor make did send me this m5c in exchange for this content and i actually use my m5 printers as my daily driver now, what do I want to tell you about the new M5C? Well, I'm going to break this up into two easily digestible videos. The first video is simply going to be a comparison between the M5 and the M5C with as little interjected bias as possible. The plan is to bite my tongue regarding opinions and keep this video to pure facts. And tomorrow's video will be my full-fledged M5C review. And yes, it will be jam-packed with my bias. And for all of you bias haters, a review is inherently pure bias. So where do we begin? How about with that letter C after the M5? Well, there were some rumors going around that it stood for color or for cheap, but the truth is that it stands for compact. You see, this printer stacks in at 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters, which is smaller than the M5, but only marginally so. The standard M5 is only 15 millimeters larger on both the X and the Y. The M5C did undergo some other exterior visual modifications, and obviously Anchor Make went with the very risky play of completely and entirely removing the touch display from the printer. You might not believe me, but this has actually not even slightly affected my workflow. And that's because in parallel to developing this printer, Anchor Make has been developing their brand new application. Previously, the Anchor Make app was only good for basic stuff like checking your print status and viewing the camera, but the new app is a fully functional printer interface allowing you to operate every single function from your phone. Now there is no way that I can explain every new app feature, but I can give you a taste. So amongst other things, the app allows you to operate the printer's motion system, thermal settings, and auto leveling features. And having a screen directly on the machine would be nice. But I will say that the new design was clearly well thought out before it was implemented and I do truly believe it eliminates the requirement to having a screen. And let me go back to my previous comments about the camera. On the M5, the camera served triple purpose. It allowed for AI spaghetti detection, time lapse generation, as well as remote monitoring. Well, the M5C completely removed the camera, so none of those features are available. The next obvious major visual modification is the printer's Y axis kinematic design. The M5C is driven by a single Y-axis motor, and even though the Y-axis is only driven by one belt, this printer can still reach 5,000 mm per second squared acceleration as well as 500 mm per second velocity. And in the design of the M5, the Y-axis belts are set into the base of the printer, but on the M5C, they lifted the rails above the base. This was likely done in order to eliminate the trash and filament scraps that fell into the belt channels. With the speeds of fast printing, you're probably wondering if there were any improvements made to the extrusion system, and the simple answer is yes. But the complex answer is that the new extrusion system now supports printing at 35 millimeters cubed per second flow rate, which is an additional 11 millimeters cubed per second when compared to the M5. This is made possible by the newly designed 32 and a half millimeter hot zone paired with the more torquey 21 and a half to one gear reduction ratio. And something everyone wanted but wasn't an option on the M5. Well, the M5C is now equipped with a true all-metal hot end supporting printing up to 300 degrees Celsius. This was actually not readily apparent to me until I noticed that there was not a spare PTFE tube in the included toolkit, which by the way is still far superior to the tools supplied by all other manufacturers. And what is up with this big silver button that is staring you down? Well, this button is designed to replace the screen for quick access to basic printer operations. Depending on how and when the button is pushed, it can perform different operations. 
For example, if the printer is idle, you can push and hold the button to activate the auto leveling function or even reprint the last file. If the printer is actively printing, you can single or double press the button to pause or resume printing. So as for my final spec rundown of this machine, well, I am really quite impressed. Anchormake did a fantastic job of cutting costs all while keeping the machine capabilities comparable or better than the standard M5. Now, a few other notable places of cost cutting can be found inside the printer's base. When you open up the printer's shell, it is clear that Anchormake opted to use basic wiring instead of the old style thick rubberized wiring, but who cares? And the design of the M5C? Well, it is nearly identical to the M5, just marginally smaller. The gantry assembly is practically identical, and in fact, the cost reduced wiring in the M5C makes assembly of the Z axis even easier. And you'll notice that Anchormake did away with the beautiful retail packaging, but again, who cares? As long as the printer ships safely, I don't need to pay for a pretty box. And lastly, well, the assembly instructions are no longer printed in a booklet, so after assembly is completed, I think you can safely assume this page is good for the bin. Overall, the spec loadout of the M5C makes it a serious, serious competitor for the top charts, and I promise you that the printing capability has not suffered at all. If you guys are interested in seeing my full review of this machine, including my opinions about everything mentioned in this video, as well as the detailed print results from this machine, I urge you to subscribe to this channel and watch tomorrow's video. And if this video has provided you any entertainment benefit, then I would greatly appreciate it if you clicked the like button so we could help grow the reach of the channel. And of course, if you've made it this far in the video, start your comment with give me the potato chips now. Guys, thank you so much for your continued channel support and I will see you in tomorrow's video.